Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Health and Wellness Podcast brought to you by Sanford Health. I'm your host, Courtney Collin with Sanford Health News. This series begins new conversations and continues the important ones, all designed to keep you well physically and mentally. In this episode, we are focusing on heart health, specifically heart and vascular screenings and everything you need to know. Dr. Ahmed Abuzanona is a cardiologist at Sanford Health in Fargo and joins us now for this conversation. Dr. Abuzanona, welcome. Good to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. As we talk about heart and vascular screenings, why are these so important? So screening by nature, um, it means that we're getting in a, a, pair of a patient, or like let's say an uh, individual who doesn't really have any symptoms or known disease. And we're trying to find out if they're at risk of having a particular heart problem or a vascular problem in the upcoming few years. That means if we discover it early in the process, we can do a lot more about it to curbside the problem and make sure we don't um, progress into a real event. Because a heart attack, for instance, it can be a very dramatic uh, event that can lead to a lot of complications. And talk about some of the common signs or symptoms that might lead to heart health concerns, heart disease, or may eventually result in a heart attack. It can be different for different people. We know any discomfort in the upper, like in the chest area or even up the upper abdominal area, the upper part of the belly, can be a sign of heart attack. Even um, in women can be more can have additional symptoms like maybe nausea, a little bit of vomiting, or um, shortness of breath rather than the typical heaviness of chest that that we were taught um, as a sign of a heart attack. So heart attack can, can, can have a lot of symptoms. Now, outside of that, heart disease in general can have different symptoms. That can be uh, bad lightheadedness, bad palpitations, which means like fluttering sensation and fast heartbeat sensation. It could be shortness of breath, uh, doing things that you were capable of doing weeks uh, before, um, or swelling in the ankles, or can be chest pain that may be not as dramatic, but tends to happen frequently when uh, when an individual is doing uh, uh, things or their daily activities or exercising. So there are multiple things that uh, heart disease can present with. So when we talk about a heart or vascular screening, What's the difference, and how would I know which one I need? That's that's an excellent question. So, the the heart screening focuses on the arteries of the heart, and essentially, what there is one question we're trying to answer: What is the likelihood that a person would have a heart attack or a similar event in the next few years? So, the way the heart screening answered that question is by checking few things that includes an EKG, uh, a blood pressure, body weight, and cholesterol levels, along with some information about the individual. And if the risk is thought to be high enough, we do additional testing that's called calcium scoring. Now, um, we can expand on this later, but I'll, I'll leave that for the heart part. Now, for the vascular part, so vascular, that means blood vessels, and those are the things that run from the heart into the body. And what we're trying to identify here, um, do we have high risk of blockages in those arteries? Some of those arteries go to the brain, and we call those the carotid arteries, and those lie in the neck. And if they have problems, they increase the risk of stroke. There is a big artery that goes down our belly, it's called the aorta. And that can dilate and cause something called an aneurysm. This is like the Latin word for dilation. So this is something that we want to discover as well. The last thing is the arteries that goes to the legs. And that can cause issues with the legs, including pain, and sometimes can even, in the most severe form, lead to um, ulcers and amputations and infections. So those arteries also can be studied. Now, if we talk about vascular screening, we're focusing on those, the arteries in the neck, the big artery in the belly, and the arteries and veins in the legs. And most of the time, we just study them with an ultrasound. We can also get some sort of blood pressure measurements in the legs that helps us tell us, like help tell us about the health, how healthy those leg, uh, leg arteries are. So that they're a bit different, but um, as you would imagine, that a disease process that affects the heart most likely will also involve those arteries. So I would say 
most people would benefit from uh, screening both things if they're indicated. So if, if, if you have high uh, risk to heart problems, you would benefit from heart screening and also you would benefit from vascular screening. You know, if I wanted to move forward with one or both screenings, how does that process work? Where do I start? So there are two ways to go about this. Obviously, with, through the primary care physician or provider, there's, they always uh, do a good job of evaluating cardiac and vascular risk. And uh, when, when it's believed at a certain point that the risk is high enough, we really tend to discuss the options. That can be just treating directly, giving some medications, uh, like cholesterol medication that could help lower that risk. Or if we're not 100% sure, we can do additional testing. The other way to do it is through the community, and this is what Sanford is doing. So trying to uh, keep this open to the community through our screening program. And what happens in the screening program is you're met with a, with a te- technologist from the, from the screening center they evaluate the risk based on multiple things, include the age, the gender assigned at birth, the blood pressure. Um, they check an EKG. They also check a cholesterol level. And they put all of this information together and identify you know, the risk in the next 10 years. If the risk is considered to be high, and for us here in Sanford, we define as more than 6%, then they would recommend the calcium score uh, test. So there's multiple different ways to do it. If you're in the community and you you've, you want to directly get that evaluated, it can be through the screening center, and, or you can just do it through the primary care physician and primary care provider. Now, what can I expect during that screening appointment? Walk me through the process. Part of that screening is identifying the risk. So after the blood pressure, the cholesterol, the EKG, and the uh, the brief conversation to ask about family history, etc. The next big thing that is done if a patient is eligible is called calcium scoring. And we'll talk a little bit about this. So calcium score is uh, essentially a CAT scan, and it's considered a low-dose CAT scan. We do it without injecting dye, without even needing um, IV access, so we don't uh, use an IV line for this. And it's a quick process where you... the the patient would go into the the CAT scanner. It typically takes seconds to take the picture itself. The whole process might take a few minutes. And uh, what we do is we look at calcium deposition, so how much calcium there is on those arteries that supply the heart. And what that tells us, if, if someone has some calcium on their arteries, that tells us they have higher risk for coronary problems or the, like a heart attack or heart attack-like conditions in the future. And that allows us to start treating them to prevent them from happening. Now, if someone does not have any, like no calcium, and what we call that a calcium score of zero, the risk is extremely low. And this actually adds up to be less than 1% in the next 10 years. So it would be quite reassuring if someone is concerned about uh, a high risk, maybe due to family history or due to higher cholesterol or um, anything else. Um, having a negative or like a zero calcium score is very, very reassuring. And even having a positive test where you we uncover some uh, early process will allow us to treat effectively and prevent future heart attacks. Do you recommend these screenings every year? So what about those of us who are not at high risk? Assuming a low risk score like zero can be associated with good health? Yeah, I really like the way you describe it. It's good health. Even though it's initially designed to to comment on the heart and the risk for heart attacks, it turns out if someone has a low, uh, or like a zero score, which is, which is normal, they actually have lower risk for a lot of other things. So lower risk for cancer, lower risk for chronic kidney disease, lower risk for uh, lung obstructive disease, and even lower risk for hip fractures. And... Uh, there is a comment that we sometimes use is someone who has, even if they're in their 60s or the 70s or 80s, if they have a calcium score of zero, we call them healthy agers in general. So, so you, you're aging in a very healthy way, and it's not just a testament to how healthy your heart and your vascular system is. It's just a reflection of how healthy the entire body is. 
how often do you need to repeat this? If it was zero, I would say not not earlier than five years. If it was, it can be three to five years. We don't really know for sure. But the earliest I would do it three years after. The maybe it could be delayed up to five years, and I would think that's appropriate. Now, the uh, if it was positive, so we found an abnormality. We really don't need to repeat that anymore because once we identify someone who is at higher risk, we would just treat and uh, we will essentially do a lot of things to prevent heart attacks. The things we do, we focus on the lifestyle, so diet, exercise, weight loss. We manage the blood pressure, so we try to make sure the blood pressure is well controlled. And we measure, manage the cholesterol, and we start uh, typically the patients on cholesterol-lowering medications and make sure the cholesterol is at a good level, a satisfactory level. So when it's time to look at the results of the screening, where does that information go? Who reviews it? What comes next? In our screening program, uh, the patients will be counseled about their results. And uh, if they're positive, that which means there is some coronary calcium, uh, they get referred to the primary physician, and we end up seeing most of those patients. So most of those patients, particularly if the calcium score is high, I would say above 100, we end up in cardiology seeing most of those patients. And the goal uh, at that point is to, to see if additional testing is required, if there's any concern about a blockage in those arteries that we need to fix. But otherwise, we just make sure that we corrected all the risk factors and uh, we're maintaining a good um, blood pressure, maintaining good cholesterol, and treating appropriately. So for our listeners now who might be ready to get their screening, how can they make an appointment? The heart and vascular screening is essentially a service. So if you'll go to the, our website at Sanford, uh, look up the location, because we have multiple locations, look up the location uh, closest to you, and there is a number. You just call and schedule an appointment. And uh, you don't necessarily need to see a physician prior to that uh, because it's a, um, it's a well-structured process. So only the things that are considered necessary will be done. And um, in terms of seeing the doctor, you can see the doctor beforehand to discuss if you need to do that or not, if you want uh, a tailored answer to, depending on your risk profile. But um, if there is any concern, any issues with the results of the test, you will be referred to see a physician afterwards. So as a cardiologist, Dr. Abuzanona, I imagine you've seen a variety of patients with varying heart health. We, if we want to take better control of our heart health, you mentioned lifestyle changes a little bit ago. What are some simple recommendations that you have to get us started? Yeah, I would say introduce some changes to, because we all can, and uh, if we look into our diet, there is always something that we can do to improve the quality of our diet, and uh, we can always move a little bit more. So that's different for different people. What we would recommend in general, like general outlines or general guidelines, in terms of diet, try to introduce more uh, vegetable fruits and grains, and uh, try to replace some of the unhealthy fat with a healthier fat. We don't say stay away from fat. We don't say that anymore, at least. We try to replace with healthier fats. Healthier fats are found in fatty fish and uh, extra virgin olive oil and uh, in nuts, unsalted nuts, obviously. Uh, the unhealthy fat, as you all know, is probably in the red meat and uh, you know the lard, the butter, etc. And stay away from highly processed food. The more processed the food is, if you look at a package that has 20 ingredients, that's probably, no matter what f uh, food product that is, it's probably not the good choice for you. Now, uh, in terms of exercise, we, we recommend about, I would say, 30 minutes of intermediate intensity. So something that gets your heart rate up, but it doesn't uh, get it up really high. So you can still talk while you do this. Um, you won't be feel you won't feel very tired. Walking can be a very good exercise for most people, and do that for 30 minutes, about three to five times a week, and that should be good enough. It's just about the, the biggest advice I usually try to give is introduce small changes because small changes are usually the ones you can sustain, 
And over time, you'll find yourself, you have to introduce enough small changes over a course of a year that it becomes easy. Because if you start uh, trying to adapt a lot of things at the same time, it becomes overwhelming and difficult. And even for, like, on a personal level, like if I want to introduce more than two or three changes in diet or exercise regimen, I usually see it that doesn't really last that long. So just keep it simple. Keep uh, Give yourself a lot of time, so maybe a year or two, and just say, like, I want to do this by, by the end of the year and make small increments, small changes, and towards the end of the year, without without you feel it, you'll find yourself there. You have a better diet, you have a better exercise regimen. And the other thing is, if you have any health conditions, health problems, make sure you uh, you address them and uh, stick to the medication. So if you have high blood pressure, make sure that's well addressed and blood pressure is controlled. Um, if you have uh, sleep apnea, make sure that you stick to the CPAP machine and uh, follow the recommendations of your physician. And just make sure you keep up with appointments. This is how you take good, good, good care of your heart and overall good, good care of yourself. I love that. Thanks. So much of our overall health aligns with having a healthy heart as well. So this is such great information. Doctor, is there anything else that you want our listeners to know today? I would say that here in Sanford, we're, we have a, a strong preventive cardiology program. We're trying to um, catch heart disease early. And we, we take pride in the fact that we prevent procedures rather than just do procedures. And in the future, there is a, a lot of focus on helping people stay away from the hospital and uh, take control of their health. So we're going to expand the, the cardi- preventive cardiology program in the future. And that's, that's my goal. It's actually my passion. So hopefully in the upcoming few years, uh, we will just continue to provide an excellent service for our patients here. Wonderful. Heart disease prevention is key all year long. Dr. Abu Zanona, thank you so much for your expertise and all that you do for Sanford Health. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. For Sanford Health News, I'm Courtney Collin.